you the major stories as captured by the leading news portals and newspapers in the country. And of course, we do the discussions around these major issues. In a bit, I'll introduce the issues for discussion, how they were captured by the newspapers, and my guests will be back after this break. Welcome back from the break. Uh, my name is Chukman Sopoku. The show is live and interactive. You can join us uh, via the WhatsApp line 055 uh, Also as well on the Facebook stream and all other platforms as advertised on the screen. Of course, major issues, the battle for the Jubilee House is taking shape. We have just about four days to that crucial election coming up uh, on Monday, December 7th. Uh, we're in the home stretch period, but the major issues curated for you, mainly coming from the campaign, this is how the major newspapers and online portals captured them this week, beginning with citynewsroom.com. New survey predicts 50.4% victory for Akufuado in 2020 polls. Ghanaians are yearning for political change. Hassan Ayariga. It's another story on citynewsroom.com. EC establishes call center to address concerns of voters on election day. It comes with a beautiful picture, albeit in mask, of um, Jean Mensah, chairperson of the Electoral Commission. Rectify anomalies with register before December 7th, NDC to EC. To a daily graphic. Final push, parties in frantic move for votes. To the Daily Guide, NDC runs with fake tape, empty bullets fired. Baku. To the Chronicle, a Kufuado bribe video in NDC hands is fake. NPP. To the Daily Statesman, NDC deploys vile propaganda, resorts to fake news, insecurity claims to rescue collapsed campaign. Daily Post. Caught in the act. Authentic video of Akufuado collecting $40,000 bribe with his two hands drops. Fuels conversation. It was reason Ahmed Swale was murdered. Soldiers accuse person of the military hierarchy of protecting invisible force members uh, who beat up soldier in uniform. To the Daily Statesman once again, Akufuado leading Ghana to glory. NPP urges Ghanaians to reject NDC vow propaganda. To the Herald newspaper. Akufuado promotes 2,745 police officers one month ahead of time, leaves suspicion and speculations of vote by John Mahama Storm's Hohoi to undo Ameus network. Ends campaign in Greater Accra region on Sunday. To the Ghanaian Times, election 2020, we are for peace. NPP, NDC, others declare ahead of December 7th polls. To the new publisher, Bahama warns EC boss over rush election results. To the Ghanaian Times once again, guard against hate speech, Dr. Ebin Chambas tells media. A final one from the Ghanaian Times. NPP NDC Geopoly, we are poised to end it. PPP, PCPP, PNC, others declare. So these are the major stories uh, for the week as captured by the major news portals as well as the newspapers. Joining me in studio to do the discussion I have with me um, Selom Adonu heads um, the features and articles desk here at CTFM CT. Welcome, Selom. Thank you, Duke. And making his debut appearance on the program is Sixtus Dong Ulo, uh, 
judicial or court correspondent, which of them? <laughs> court correspondent. Court correspondent. Court correspondent. And also uh, electoral commission correspondent, if <laughs> because my colleague as well in the newsroom. Welcome, uh, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> let's let's begin with this issue regarding this tape that has been, I mean, making rounds. It was released on Tuesday evening. Um, yesterday, that's on Wednesday, the MPP and the NDC um, held press briefings uh, regarding that the MPP, I mean, warning, of course, talking about how they would go after the media house that 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 aired that subsequently that media house has uh, issued a disclaimer has apologized uh, for that but the NDC also insisting that the president must come out to speak the NDC MPP indicating that this an old video from 2016 it was just a campaign donation the MPP saying uh, the NDC saying that it, it smacks of of corruption at this time in the campaign with a few days to go of course we understand I mean how these things work when it comes to campaigning political messaging and all but is this video one for us to be talking about at this time of the campaign let me give it to you sir have first of all have you seen the video uh, yeah there are various versions of the video <laughs> so i think i've seen a version of the video uh, there's one which is about 40 minutes one i hear is about 50 minutes mm -hmm. and one is just about six minutes so I, i've seen one of them um, and the narrations or the narratives accompanying these videos mm -hmm. And explanations that people give are different depending on where you stand and the, the the various proponents of the various views force you to see things their way but that's fine and and that's to be expected really and and uh, I, I I'm not surprised that something like this has happened and I would have actually been surprised if in this last days of the campaign we, we, we didn't see things like this. I actually expect more of these things to happen. And there'll be other things done to preempt things that the other one side knows the other side has on them. So, you know, th there are tricks and there are old guys in the game, so they know the tricks. I remember in before the 2000 election, I mean, not a video, but mm. a dramatic thing to happen that will, uh, uh, that, that people think or hope will sway the election one way or the other. So there was this gentleman called Laji Inu Saisaka, mm. who defected from the MPP, one of Kufo's campaign managers, who defected from the N MPP to the NDC. It was such a big news. Everybody was discussing it. You know, that, that happened. Uh, we also saw an instance where uh, General Secretary of the NDC, now the late Josiah Aye, you know, uh, an audio popped up mm -hmm. where, I mean, he, he, he was had saying some things regarding money and influence and things with the MPP. Mm. And that came around a similar time. And he, at the time, was the general secretary of the mm. party. That came out so big, newspapers was discussed big time, eventually suspended. People even thought that that thing cost the NDC some votes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, last election, we saw the Bugri Nabu, uh, 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 Mitsubishi or Pajaro car, mm -hmm where he said, Mugrinabu allegedly said that Mahama allegedly told him to, uh, to, to move camp or jump ship and join him mm. and ditch Nanado. You know, Mustafa Hamid, you know, uh, addressed that impassioned mm -hmm. press conference, too. didn't take questions, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, that happened, dominated discussions for a while, we're getting to the election day itself. You know, and a number of other things, you know, a number of other things have happened. In fact, I'm actually expect, well, I was actually expecting, based on things we had earlier, mm -hmm. that there were, there, were, there were sexual tapes or leaks that would be thrown out mm -hmm. around these times, pictures, etc. Fortunately or unfortunately, we've not seen any of those. What we have seen is, is a video of the president, you know, receiving cash. And I'm, and I'm careful about saying whether he was receiving a donation or, or it was bribery. But what is not contested is that he was receiving cash, mm -hmm. whatever the, pur the purpose of the cash was. It is... is, is, is I mean, it's open to a lot of discussion and a lot of analysis based on where you stand and how, how you see the video. But, you know, a number of things come up. Who, who videoed it or who, who took the video mm -hmm. and for what purpose? You know, the video is, is, is more than three years old. Mm -hmm. if, if it was taken in 2016, certainly three years, mm -hmm. more than three years old. In 2017, 
certainly more than three years old. Mm -hmm. So who took the video and for what purpose? If mm -hmm. you are going to give something to somebody, why do you take the video? For what purpose? And, and it's, it's interesting. And why wait after all this while and mm -hmm. release it at this <clears> time? <throat> What, what, what is the purpose of you releasing it at this time? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the conversation that was ongoing in the discussion, or, or, or I mean, in the video, uh, wanting somebody wanting his job to be protected from food soldiers, you know, of course, that's what the one I listened to. Mm -hmm. I know the other ones too that may say other things. Asking somebody to protect his job, you know, from food soldiers, etc. And so you are giving money. And so that throws it up a bit. If the video was, shot in 2016. In 2016, Akufado was a candidate and he did not have the power to protect a public no officer or a civil servant, a director of urban rules or so. And so what was the purpose for giving the money? Was it to secure the person's future in, in, in a later Akufado government? Or it was given when he was president so that Akufado president would protect him from 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 the food soldiers who wanted him out that is where the contention is the question is if the person was an opposition candidate why were you giving him money to protect you and if he was a candidate if he was president mm -hmm. does it mean that public officers or civil servants have to pay the president or pay politicians to protect them or keep them in office mm -hmm. that is a big question and i think that's where the contention is mm -hmm. that is what we've not been able to untie if we were able to untie that that we will know when really the video was taken, and that is still up in the air. We also had issues about T-shirts, and the question is, do you do T-shirts or print T-shirts after the person has become mm -hmm. president, or you print T-shirts for the person during the campaign time, which will mean that it will be 2016. Mm -hmm. This one, together with the earlier point I made, mm -hmm. are the issues that we really need to untie, because the MPP, you know, hits hard at this point, or their major point is that what, how do you give T-shirts to somebody who has just won an election? Mm. And, and the NDC is also saying that, why do you give money, why would you give money to a candidate who has no power to protect you, to protect you? You know, so these are the, the okay. issues. Okay, let me bring you uh, here, yeah, I'll come back to you. Uh, this, this, these things are normal, of course. In America, if you, during every election cycle, they have what they call the October surprise, which is, mm. I mean, they expect something like that to happen, which could either sway the campaign, either ways. Should we be spending time discussing it? And, and does this video have any political value at all? Uh, Jill, Salom has laid a foundation that we can build on in answering mm. that question. That the fact that these things come up mm. should not be surprising to anybody. Mm. Any watcher of the space automatically expects some of these things around this period. Do they have a value? Should we be discussing them? Let's talk about the value. The question of campaign financing mm. in every jurisdiction is critical. Every jurisdiction wants to have clear rules governing who finances which campaign. It is, one, a check on the actions of the candidate mm. as and when he or she wins the office. It even protects the candidate himself so that if the candidate had made disclosures of who financed or contributed to the campaign, the candidate would be able to um, respond to allegations such as this, mm -hmm. as and when they are, arise, any time within the tenure of the, of the office. In this particular case, it's one of the responses that we are getting, that mm -hmm. this was a donation to uh, the 2016 campaign okay. of Nanado. We saw in the video, or in one of the videos, that the then candidate, if that is the argument we are going with, recorded the amount that was taken, or at least took notes of the conversation in a diary. So it, it, it is assumed that whatever he was writing in, in the diary or whatever book it was, was a recording of the happenings of that particular meeting, including the amount that was paid, the name of the person, and the details yeah. as to what purpose the money was, 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 was uh, given to him. So it shouldn't be difficult at all for um, the president to exonerate himself mm -hmm. in this matter at all. 
and 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 that brings the relevance of the conversation around why uh, the political parties and and candidates who are seeking public office must be able to um, at any point in time disclose who contributed what to their campaign so let's say that this indeed was um, a, a, a donation that was made to the president and the laws around uh, campaign financing is the president supposed to disclose that and at what point number two is the president even willing to disclose that information mm -hmm. and if the president were to disclose that information would it exonerate him mm -hmm. or further implicate him mm -hmm. i mentioned that one of the reasons this is done or expected is to ensure that corruption is checked mm -hmm. uh, in the in the event that the person wins the office because the assumption is that you would have a lot of favors to pay back once you win the office. People who contributed to the campaign uh, are expecting contracts in all forms. Some are expecting to be able to uh, transact their businesses without any hindrance, uh, particularly for those who are into import and export uh, businesses. They are expecting that they, they wouldn't have any challenges at the, at the ports when they, they get through. For those who are road contractors or infrastructure contractors, they are expecting that when you win and you are, you are rolling out contracts, you would think about them when they put in a bid. So that if there's a school block that is to be put up and they bid for it, the mere fact that they contributed to your campaign, you should be able to return the favor. So to be able to check all of these things and to ensure that quality work is done, we are supposed to know who contributes what to whose campaign. So that if this was indeed a contribution or a donation to the Leonardo 2016 campaign, it shouldn't be difficult at all for the presidency to prove that. Mm. What should happen is bring up the particular diary, um, mm. respond to uh, the, the allegations that uh, are being uh, thrown left, right, center, with the facts, the minutes of that particular meeting. Mm -hmm. but, if, but that's assuming that minutes w was taken at the meeting. He, he, no, that's what I'm was saying. He was, was seen videos, writing. Yes, he was seen writing. Taking notes of, taking whatever, notes was of whatever was Before happening. So we're assuming that it was indeed minutes of the particular mm -hmm. meeting or encounter that he was taking, and that he was uh, taking the names of um, the people who were there and the amounts that were given and the purpose for which the amount was was given and if this document is there i, I mean we shouldn't then be having yeah, this but, conversation but our political parties have they shown i mean of course at least for the, in the past what well, close to 30 years we've had both ndc and mpp in power none seems to have shown the requisite commitment to reform our campaign financing or sell off well, it, it's, it, you see, um, it, it's been very opaque. We don't even know who finances our politicians. Of course, we, we, we know by law that foreigners, for example, should not, yeah. should not finance our political activities. But that happens. We, 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 we've heard of situations where people have, have had to go to other places, other countries, to raise funds, not to raise funds from Ghanaian nationals. They're about to raise funds from rich and key business people of those countries and bring those monies to Ghana. But you see, the, the politicians are those who make the laws. And so they wouldn't make laws which would, which would tie their hands, okay. you know. I think civil society and the media and, and, and the moral society must, must rise and demand that such a thing be done. And again, we can pass the laws, but making the laws work usually it's a function of the executive so would the executive even want to enforce a law like that it, it is problematic so the issue of our campaign financing it, it's a very difficult one it's easier or it's very easy to say that a state should finance political activities or the state should finance you know political parties that is a different discussion altogether whether or not the state does it the greed of politicians will, 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 will still make them go out there and look for a lot of money 
to do whatever they, 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 they want we, to do. We know immediately the campaign starts. It's easy to track every step of the way who has raised this amount of money. Where is it coming from over the last maybe say two weeks? Getting to the American election it was easier to know say over the last four or five days to the election itself. Who had raised? I mean, how Biden was able to raise more money than Trump going to election? How that was an indication as to where people were going to vote. Even polling mm -hmm. now has become. Well, why? Why is it difficult for us to do yeah, this? It's, it's difficult because the actors in the space mm. don't want it to happen. Mm. We live in a country where people's wealth are not even questioned. Mm. You know, you, you can't investigate somebody's wealth. Somebody doesn't or didn't have a lot of money, just a few thousands in the person's account, that same account. The person comes to power two, three years later, you have millions of cities in that same account. Mm. And nobody bothers to actually question anything. Mm. Our laws on even uh, declaration of assets are even a joke, you know. So, so it's just because the people in the space, and they are the same politicians. They don't want it to work. Who will make the laws? You know, the parliamentarians. They are they not politicians who who enforce the laws? The executive who even send the bill to parliament. You know, the executive. They don't want it to work, so they won't do it. They benefit from the system the way it is right now. Who will make laws to tie himself up? Nobody will do that. You know, the the, the other issue which is quite interesting to me in this matter is it's about corruption, and I hear people talk about the fact that. You know, it was a 2016 video, and so it didn't matter. And the others are saying, no, the man was in office, so it matters. Whether he was in office or not, once he took the money in expectation of something, or in somebody's expectation of something, that is corruption. Mm. Let me refer you to the Criminal Offenses Act, Section 242. In fact, 240241, talk about 239240241, mm. talk about corruption and they define corruption in different ways. Special explanation as to corruption of and by public officer, 242, I read. It is immaterial for the purposes of section 240 and 241 that the person respecting whose conduct the endeavor, agreement, or offer is made is not yet at the time of the making of the endeavor, agreement, or offer a public officer, juror, or voter. Mm -hmm. If the endeavor, agreement, or offer a public officer, juror, or voter, if the endeavor, agreement, or offer is made in the expectation that that person will and may become or act as a public officer, a juror, a, or a voter. Mm -hmm. So it's actually immaterial mm -hmm. whether the money was taken before or after, after the person got into office. So mm -hmm. this whole discussion about 2016 or 2017, if you look at the reading of the law properly, it's immaterial. It is very immaterial. What we must establish is whether the, the, the conversation in the video that protect my job, mm -hmm. I'm giving you this money, sometimes the money goes to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. We've given quite a lot, but you know, we don't find the right people mm -hmm. to bring it, and maybe they don't even bring it. That's why we decided to bring it ourselves. Whether that conversation actually happened, and whether the money really was given with an expectation that even if we agree it's 2017, 2016, if the man became president, the man will protect the man's job. Mm -hmm. That is it. So I can even go with the 2016 argument. But if it, even if it's 2016 and the man took the money based on the agreement that when I come, yes, I will protect you, then that's a problem. Because that, that was the reason why the woman gave the money. Mm. And so once you accept it, it means that you've agreed to the offer. Mm. You, you've accepted the offer. The offer is protect my job, so I'm giving you this money. Once you've taken the money, yes, and indeed you, you grab the that. money with two hands, as, 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 as we've heard people say, and indeed, as is shown in the video, it means you've accepted it. You've accepted the offer. Now you are bound. And so this particular provision, 4242, then, then, then kicks in. So that is the context I think the national discussion should take. It doesn't matter at what point you took the money, but what was the expectation at the time you were taking the money? That yeah. is the, the discussion the, the, that I think. The decision of, of these media houses to have aired uh, the, the material and the way they, 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 they aired it. You, you, is there anything wrong with it? it there are editorial policies that mm. every media house runs with. And before, before you air such a, a video, mm. it would have gone through a particular filtering system. Mm -hmm whether the media house can stand on some independent authority to confirm or to even defend 
the decision to air the particular uh, material. So from the from the statement, they should looks like they they were not aware of what was going to be aired on their platform. Which is what which is what would be mm. problematic. You see, you don't. I'm not sure mm. anything goes through our, our mm. platform. Mm. No, there are checks and balances. There's a particular policy on even airing little videos and tapes on, on our platform. Exactly, but that's Media House mm. uh, specific. specific. And so I, I, I think the decision, the apology was, was given in uh, quick response to the, the threat to sue mm -hmm. the Media House, and they had to rush to do that. But it may be a lesson to Media Houses to go behind or beyond some of these things, mm -hmm. do further investigations on them uh, before they go on to air them. Maybe the media house did not do that. Maybe the media house even had something else it, it, it could have stood on, but didn't want to go through um, all the stress of defending itself, the back and forth and all of that. You, you, you know the stress of even going to court mm -hmm. or meeting with uh, aggrieved parties to negotiate a way out mm -hmm. and all of that. But it is a question of the amount of responsibility that is on media houses mm -hmm. as gatekeepers to ensure that people who are listening or watching them are not fed anything okay. at all, but that whatever runs through any particular um, channel or outlet is what is authentic, is what is credible, mm -hmm. and is what the people must at all costs mm -hmm. know about. Okay. I, I, I also think that they maybe took them by surprise, maybe not. Okay. Because I think it was a bot air time, you know, for 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 something. So maybe the person will tell you that I'll have, have some videos to buttress the point mm -hmm. I'm making. If it, maybe mm -hmm. they didn't query yeah. the, the particular video that, 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 that was going to be screened. And so that is the downside. Mm -hmm. And the MPP's point is that the tape is heavily doctored. Well, that, that's that's their view. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a two-sided thing. That's their view. The other mm -hmm. side will say no, and they may call it defamation. Mm -hmm. The other side may say no, it's not defamation. Mm -hmm. And one defense to defamation is truth. Mm -hmm. So if they believe it is the case and they can prove that it is, let's go to court. If you go to court, you open yourself up. I bring proof, and the, the whole world sees that indeed this video that you claim is doctored wasn't doctored after all. That 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 is it. So it's difficult right now to believe what each of the parties is saying, whether it was doctored mm. or not. And it was, how was it doctored? You know, was it the, 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 the sound or the audio of it mm -hmm. that was doctored? Or, I mean, I, I don't understand it. If they want to get to the bottom of this, I mean, the, the courts are there, the places are there to vindicate their rights. They can go to court, the other side will come, they can sue them for defamation, and they will bring their defenses. Mm. The court will decide where, where, where the scale tilts, and we, 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 we will have will have some truth in there. But you see, the, the bigger issue for me really is the absence of corruption, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the absence of the conversation around corruption in this particular election. It comes up every now and then, we, but we, it is we, not... We, we, we'll be going to right. the determining issues for the election after the break. We'll take a break here. This is uh, what the papers are saying. Keep your messages coming in. Uh, we'll be back after this break. Africana City is building bamboo bicycles to help children get to school. Good citizens of Ghana, it's that time of year again. 2020 is an election year. And we must go out and vote. As you go out to vote, remember, you have to go and vote peacefully. This country deserves peace. When we go out and vote peacefully, we are securing the future of Ghana. Because the election day is won, but any violence, will lead us into many years of dysfunctional country. We don't want that. 
and go and vote peacefully. Even more important, we make the right choices. For those of us who are people of faith, God is interested in our country. And when we pray to him, he will direct us as to how to vote. Peace must crown our electioneering efforts. That's part of democracy. Tenacity is using plastic waste to provide affordable homes. Maybe to create food and share or hand over the country's entire box at his brother. <laughs> see, incompetence again. No way. I've come a long way to take any risk. Charlie, see, we can't afford to lose one D, one air, one constraints, one ambulance, one dish with one warehouse, one village, one, one dam, one. Ah, one boy, one girl. Cool down. Naku. For food and jobs, See, even a greenhouse farm in the year of return. I live Ganaka, Ganaka. You, you forget the almighty Ali. free and Welcome back. This is what the papers are saying. Um, Duke Ben Soko Christ Love in Studio Seloma Dunu and Six to Stone Ulo. A couple of messages you sent in so far. Nana from Adenta says the issue of individuals sponsoring politicians must really be addressed in this country, else, we will not see an end to some of these things. Sheikh from Zoku Borga says it's clear that our politicians are always out for witch hunting. For me, NDC. And MPP lack the moral right to talk about bribery and corruption since they are two sides of the same coin. 2020 is about track record, not politics of lies and deception. Let's move on to a second issue for, for discussion. It's got to do with the uh, campaigning activities. Uh, well, just a few days to go, four days to go specifically. Um, I'd like to find out from my, my, my guests what the determining issues have been so far. 2012 election was, of course, the determining factor was education. Whether um, free SHS or affordable education, and then access to 200 community days in your high schools. 2016, of course, education was on the front banner, but corruption was also an issue, and in the, in the economy as well. This year, or this election, 2020, of course, various surveys have indicated that corruption is no, is, is no longer an issue. Or corruption is not one of the Topic front issues. burner issues, which is which for me is worrying. But going into the election, with barely less than a week to the election, what what issues? Of course, the issues that have been discussed, the manifestos and all of those things, the matters on the platform. What are the issues determining this election for you? I'll begin with you, Salo. Well, I I mm. think the economy. Mm. I, I think the economy. Uh, I think education, I think infrastructure. Uh, so these are the issues I see, mm. you know, coming up. The economy, because you want to ask yourself whether, you know, your life has been better off in the last four years. And the, the, the conclusion you reach should be able to lead you to make a decision. Education, because, I mean, mainly because of the free SHS and how this government has positioned as positioning the free SHS as its flagship program, mm. and how the government has also tried to make it a matter 
at any least opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it is one policy that has permeated almost every family, you know, almost every family has somebody attending senior high school, and so that is free, and, and, and that takes off some burden from, from parents. And I've heard people say that uh, they have two, three children, they couldn't have paid, but now they, because of the government, they have paid. And the, 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 the attempt or the, the, the quest to drum home the point that it is only the MPP that can maintain the free SHS mm -hmm. because they brought it. Mm -hmm. And Mohammed's also point that no, no free SHS has come to stay. We'll only even make it better. We will make it better. You know, so the back and forth and the very permeating nature of that issue makes it always attractive and makes it always, you know, a matter you want to discuss. In mm -hmm. fact, in recent past, Mahama raising the point that he even started a free SHS yeah. in 2015 and all the issues that he generated. So all these things make the matter of education still remain mm -hmm. at the very top. And of course, what we've seen between yesterday and today, the two parties, you know, trying to modify their manifesto promises a bit in, in a way to harvest more of the free SHS votes. I think that is very interesting. And yeah. the analysis on that really is that the free SHS has been great. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of absorbing the fees, you know, a lot of people have gone through it and it's free. So people who couldn't ordinarily afford to pay senior high school fees now had it for free. Now you finish that. So that is now behind you. You are thankful for whoever gave you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But you want to move forward. You want to see what lies ahead. The next hurdle is what you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. So that next hurdle becomes going to the university or going to the tertiary institution. You don't have the money. How do you pay? Mm -hmm. So that now becomes the scrabble for, for, for the politicians to get more votes. I may be grateful to a party for giving or a government for giving me the opportunity to finish free SHS. But if I'm unable to continue, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't do me a lot of good. Mm -hmm. So now I'll turn to the person who is offering me, you know, uh, uh, some prospects mm -hmm. and some respite going forward. So now we have the issue about the tertiary education. So now we had the NDC before say that 50% of the uh, uh, first year fees were going to be absorbed. Mm -hmm. MPP also said they were going to work on the, 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 the no guarantor system so that uh, uh, loans could be you know, extended to students in time for, for payment. And then this also said a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Only for us to hear that now there was a big announcement to be made by the scholarship secretariat. Mm -hmm. We hear some 20 million CDs have been made available for, for 150,000 students from the free SHS who will be going into the university, you know, a scholarship. Mm -hmm. NDC, I think, NDC's announcement came before people said the MPP got preempted. I don't know. Now, NDC is saying that, in fact, you don't even need to apply mm -hmm. to any scholarship thing. No, you don't need don't to apply. It's, it's once you qualify, once you get admission, you are in the school. It is free. Mm -hmm. So instead of 50-50, which was JMP, you take 50, I take 50. Now, Faninina now is free. You just walk into the school with your, with your admission letter. Mm -hmm. So you see, what these discussions will do is that now the people have finished their SS. They finished the free. They are happy with the free. They are grateful. They want to move on. So which of the two parties will be offering them something to look forward to? But, but in all of these discussions, what is missing is the economic cost to this. Yeah, of will, course. Will a post a post COVID economy on a path to recovery be able to fund all of these things? You know, it's 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 always been a mm. discussion, and and of course, if you look at this campaign and the promises that have been made by the two sides, you you ask yourself this question every now and then. What we've been told is that there is money, and we will mm. find the money to to finance mm. it. And, and I think a lot of people are listening to the governor of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. Over the weekend, he was at a dinner. Mm -hmm. And they said that we, we were almost running out of fiscal space in terms of the fact that if, for example, COVID is to, uh, I mean, we, should, we, are, we are to have a surge in COVID, we will not, or he was afraid we were not going to find the fiscal space to deal with it. And that is huge. Coming from the Bank of Ghana governor, that was very, very huge. But it appears the politicians don't see that. They don't know that at all. But of course, as we saw in the case of the free SHS, where there's a will, there will be a way. So that my, my only worry is that we are becoming a people who are generally or gradually being socialized to want free things. And that may give us a sense of entitlement, and that may be counterproductive in the end. That is my only worry. Okay. Uh, uh, um, Sixtus, 
Yes, the, the campaign is still going on. I call for those in the eastern region, just wrap the Bashanti region. Mama is in the voter region today, mm -hmm. talking about not being ruled. But the determining issues for this election are rising out of the campaign activities. We are in the final lap as well. It, it remains education. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> a lot of people think that the, uh, education was a key issue only in the 2016 election. Even this year, mm -hmm. it remains the key issue. Uh, the, the fact that uh, free SHS was a topical issue in 2016 and part of the question or the reason why it became topical was the question of financing, which you, you talked about. Uh, the, the, the question was where the Akufuado administration was going to get money to uh, finance that system. We all remember the, the BBC interview, the hard, the, the, the hard talk. Interview. Yes, um, in which interview he said he he had an obligation mm. to disclose only to the mm. Ghanaian people uh, the, the cost of that. Mm. Now, over the, the, the four-year period that we have seen this happen, uh, what we may want to then do is evaluate the cost that we have incurred yeah. and to see whether going forward we are able to do this. But it doesn't appear to me that uh, both parties, the NDC and the MPP, have averted their minds to that cost element mm. at this stage. It is a question of um, how much can I promise or how much more can I promise the people uh, to convince the people to, to vote for me. I think it's about let them vote for me before I think about how to finance At it. Least, Especially Shoma Hama is at, saying that the Chumpe, which has now been modified, is going to cost 500 million CDs. The scholarship that's available mm. for the free SSS graduates, according to government, is 20 million CDs. So at least we have a semblance of some cost. Coupled with the free SHS that averagely cost us 1.2 billion CDs a year. Yes, uh, that is the cost mm. of it. Where is the money coming from? From the oil revenue. That's for free SHS. For free Largely. SHS. Yeah. For but for the, the tertiary, we don't know. Exactly. So the the point is that even for the the free SHS, remember that the oil revenues are disp dis dispensed along uh, priority areas. Mm. Uh, well, now that it has become uh, a priority area for government mm. in terms of uh, providing free S a SHS, the policy will be revisited so that mm -hmm. every year we would have some focus on free SHS and to ensure that there's money flowing from that to finance it. But it, it still leaves us uh, room to think about how to sustain it and running into the university level. There was a a survey conducted by Youth Bridge Foundation. Mm -hmm. I got interested in that survey because it was conducted amongst first-time voters. Okay. The Electoral Commission defines them to mean or uh, refer only to voters between the ages of 18 and 21. And a lot of these people said they were going to vote based on the promises in relation to education okay. by the various political parties. parties. So they will take the uh, Nanado campaign, evaluate the policies on education, and see is this the party that we should be voting for? Is this the party that will guarantee us um, the, the education that we need? Then they will juxtapose that with the Mahama campaign and see uh, is this a better alternative? Should we vote for Mahama? And this is what the young people are saying. Mm -hmm. In addition to this uh, free SH, or education generally, which they said was going to be a key determinant of their vote, was also the question of job creation. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to hear a lot of that, um, except for the mention of the uh, legalization of um, uh, no, Okada, Okada yeah. which became a big thing for the NDC, yeah, so. and uh, 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 which, of course, also generated some uh, uh, long talk among uh, commentators mm -hmm. as to whether the NPP was responding to that with the recently unveiled uh, quad quadricycle. quad quadricycles. You see, so young people, as as young as 18 to 21 years, are looking at these key issues. And added to that, the two that I've already mentioned is the um, <clears throat> the question of infrastructure okay. that. They are looking at education, they are looking at um, uh, job creation, they are looking at infrastructure, and they are looking at health care. This is what the young people are saying. Does, and does I'm it particular worry you that, that. that corruption is not high up there? 
is it is it a is it um is it a manifestation of the fact that the ordinary Ghanaian has given up that NDC MPP we can't fight the corruption in fact versus... in our reports in our reports mm. at the constituency level we hear these things mm. that people have lost faith in the system to deal with corruption people simply don't trust that the systems put in place are able to deal effectively and decisively with um, uh, uh, the question of corruption and if you have looked at how uh, uh, the president Akufado has handled people or, or appointees of his administration accused of uh, corruption uh, John Mahama had the same allegation mm. uh, remember when he moved um, Elvis to the, to the, the, Flagstaff, the Flagstaff house, house yeah. at the time and we have seen a number of uh, appointees under this administration who have been cleared amidst uh, questionable circumstances. Mm. Civil society has spoken against it. Um, usually I don't even want to dwell on what the political opponents of are course. saying. So if we are to use the standards of civil society to measure. But again, you don't forget that the work by uh, Martin Amidu mm -hmm. also brought up the issue of uh, uh, corruption. And so before Martin Amidu, it, it was still the same question of um, Nanado on the campaign platform or uh, Dr. Baumia on the campaign platform saying don't trust uh, John Mahama is the same person 2016 who you are seeing today. There's been no change. But the, the work of Martin Amidu on the Ejapa transaction and indeed the, the whole discussion generated by civil society around that particular uh, transaction reignited the discussion around corruption mm -hmm. and also questioned the institutions that we have put in place to to um, help us fight against corruption so it, it 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 has made people ask again is the office of the special prosecutor free independent and able and willing enough to fight uh, uh, allegations or investigate and prosecute allegations of corruption is the 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 auditor general or the off the, the audit service able to uh, dig out these things without fear of um, uh, being pursued by the, the political powers of the day or the civil society itself, the media itself, are these structures and institutions able to, uh, you know, deal heavily on the question of corruption without uh, any fears or any favors. So yes, it might not have been a front uh, uh, banner mm. or on, 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 on a, a topical issue, but the, the singular transaction, a Japan royalties mm. uh, deal, brought it back up. And now, if you look at a lot of the adverts that we are seeing on TV, we still have these things. Oh, the political parties themselves are trying about to make it an issue. An, an, an issue. Okay. So we haven't given up. I'm not sure. All right, I uh, have a couple of messages. Uh, Johnny from Adenta says, if the people <coughs> are saying this video was uh, put together in 2016, my question to them is that by then, President Akufuado was not a president. So why were they referring to him in the video as His Excellency? Gofred Bonsu from Kadi says, whether 2016 or 2017, the question is simple. Did the president take the money to protect someone's job? If yes, then the president is corrupt. Um, John Akatamansu says, why is the MPP not talking about corruption now as a campaign message as they did in 2016? Is it, it is just because corruption has actually swallowed them. Kujo from Wong says, this bribery issue is serious. Whichever period we are told it happened. One, assuming it happened in 2016, then it means that a gentleman appointed by NDC went to donate to the opposition leader to rescue him and therefore the man is keeping his job as a result of that payment equals corruption. If it happened in 2017, when Anado is president, then that is why the man has not been sacked. That's also corruption. We'll take a break here. When I come back, we have the other issues to deal with. Africana City is building bamboo bicycles to help children get to school. What's the perfect gift for our staff in crisis season? All your different caliber of staff. Big question. 
I don't want to start guessing what each person needs. And have to worry where to get what for who when. Some want electronics, furniture, clothes, others want groceries, crockery, cutlery. Hey, how can you tell? She's a magician. With the Malcolm gift vouchers, everyone can get what they want. Remember, you can get the same bargain prices from any Malcolm shop across the country. Now, everyone can get a perfect gift. Africanacity is using plastic waste to provide affordable homes. As you all know, if not for our president, most of us would have been on the street or even in the market. For me, my parents said after GHS, I'm joining my mother in the market to help me get for my other brothers. As for me, my parents never believed in this free SHS policy. They thought it was never going to happen until they started enjoying it. You know what? I think I'm the luckiest among all students. I come from a very remote state that does not even exist on the map. But thanks to Nanado's policy, five years ago, my mother had to sell her shop and get a loan before my brother could complete in SHS. This is the man with good intention for his people and generations to come. Girls, don't you think it's high time we give him a second opportunity to better Ghana? Ever since my dad died, it's just been my mom and I. And money has always been a big problem. But thanks to this free SHS policy, I'm in school and my mom is really financially. Please, don't you think he deserves another 10? Oh yes, he deserves another 10. Welcome back. This is what the papers are saying. The final minutes were um, dedicated to this week. Special voting happened on Tuesday. Um, I voted, and if you can still see the ink on my on my finger, seven uh, of you voted as well. I'm no, no, I didn't. Oh. I'll, 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 I'll vote on this. Ah, but but six students <laughs> voted, right? I did. Yeah, so we I have with the two of us here. We have already already voted. Of course, and then yesterday the big announcement came that. For the, for, the, for the first time in our history, probably in the Fourth Republic, 14 days is going to be a holiday. These two issues. Yeah, I mean, special voting, it's always been the case mm -hmm. and it's necessary because certain people will be working on that day and so uh, they, 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 are, they will be unable to go queue at their various places to vote. That will take away from the work they will do, which is yeah. crucial. So, so that's great. And voting, special voting has always been smooth yeah. because of the class of people voting. I mean, security people. Mm -hmm. uh, media people, EC uh, officials and people who will be working on that day, etc. So generally we don't expect a lot of problems. And also because, uh, where a, lot, because a lot of the polling stations are po were police stations or are police stations and the numbers involved very few, I mean you are able to deal with issues that, that may arise. However, something that happened, was it yesterday or two mm -hmm. days ago, the, the special voting day, that was Monday. Yeah. It was on Tuesday. On Tuesday. So that was two days ago. Two days ago. Was the distribution of food, yes, yes, you yes, know, yes. at some uh, of the polling centers. I, I think the EC must watch that. I don't know what the food was to was meant for, uh, to influence voters or to... Uh, for party agents. With party agents. And everyone there, who there are about one or two party agents uh, at the police station. And who was willing... And party uh, agents, in fact, one, you, you, one party agent. Ooh. So you bring a, a car full of packs of food to share... How many party agents, mm -hmm. how many of them will eat? I, I think the EC must Super check that, that mm -hmm. and ensure that that doesn't repeat <clears throat> itself on election day. You just need one person raising an issue about it and one person disagreeing and the whole play, the whole thing will degenerate and something else something will happen. Else. I don't think it's a good thing. Holy I also day. think that the issue about some of the security persons not finding their names on the list it's not wasn't a very good sign. They have promised to rectify so they will vote on the day of the election. I think that's good. Uh, for public holiday, it's, it's great. Indeed, 7 January hasn't been, 7 December hasn't been a holiday since. Mm -hmm. But people voted, and then people, uh, I mean, people found a way around it. Uh, it was a working day, but not a lot of people went to work mm -hmm. anyway. One, once it's been made a public holiday now, we are free and we are safe. We know that if you don't go to work, a boss is not going to query you. 
you have your time to do whatever you do. But of course, for people who registered close to their workplace, it would be a bit of a challenge because now they have to move from their homes wherever they live and drive all the way to work to, to, to vote. Apart from that, I think it's a great thing. So some of people are not happy that, I mean, tomorrow, Friday, the, the Farmer's Day holiday, it's no more happening, but it's been pushed to Monday. I, I honestly think it, it was needless. Needless. Yes, because um, uh, we have always done this. Mm. Um, we have always found a way of voting without necessarily needing. Oh, you mean the public holiday on Monday was, is needless? It is needless. It ne oh. it's need oh. I'm, I'm also thinking about the uh, loads of people mm. who registered around their workplaces mm. because that is how they were able to... If you come to CT, for instance, mm. a lot of us had to register around here. So a lot of us voted within this particular uh, constituency because of the demands of the work. I'm imagining if um, we were in the public sector or an employment that um, uh, allowed us to enjoy the holiday, whether a lot of us would be willing and ready to come back travel all the way from wherever we, we reside, some from Tema, some from Spintex, others from the Dodoa side, somebody even lives at, uh, uh, after Amasaman, mm. whether I'm, if I'm willing to travel all the way back to here to come in and, and mm. cast my vote. So, I, I mean, I'm, I think the expectation is to uh, increase voter turnout, and that we can only measure after the, yeah, the election. Sense. On the question of the, the special voting, I, I, I think the only thing the Electoral Commission and indeed the security agencies can do is learn from some of the, mm. the, the, the problems that we identified. It was less than 200,000. Yes. Uh, uh, for instance, the sharing of food. Mm. There's a reason there's always um, a, a radius within the polling station that is cordoned off so that people don't go beyond the tip. So to have a situation where a, a parliamentary candidate is sharing food within the radios is it's unacceptable and I was asking why this person was not even arrested because we are giving sign to people that they can they can behave with uh, impunity on on election day and that is exactly what is going to uh, cause chaos and and so yes the electoral commission has to check that again it, it, it gave us the opportunity to measure how the, the, the security uh, uh, services would be able to work on that day. I still have a problem with this whole uh, expectation that people will be deployed to areas close to them yeah. so that they are able to, to, to vote, vote uh, and then police mm. the, 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 the process. We are definitely going to have numbers uh, challenges. There are going to be deficits. Mm. How are we going to resolve that? Some people are definitely going not to be able to vote. It's, it's going to happen. Right. So I think next time, these are lessons that we should learn for the next election. Okay, so hopefully the next time that we are here, um, there would be um, some determination as to uh, the direction of the country for the next four years. But until then, keep watching CCTV. Enjoy the, the rest of our programming. Voters Diary is up next. I had to do Stella Madonna and Sixus Domolo. My name is Duke Mensopoku. Voter's Diary is sponsored by Samsung. Samsung, inspire the world, create the future.